Welcome to the Nutramedical Report, the third hour, of course, on Thursdays. And, of course, on our live stream channel is Tim Alexander, Lord Sterling. And at the bottom of the hour, we'll have Chris Harris with some remarkable updates. Last night at midnight, I was awoken by a fairly loud earthquake that occurred in the fault line extension of the San Andreas Fault. It's crawling up the, all the way up the San Andreas Fault from the Baja California through the Sea of Cortez, and it's on its way to California. And when it gets here, I'm sure it's not going to be pleasant because that earthquake was about 300 miles away, and it was loud. We have major twin earthquakes in Indonesia. We've got Mount Etna active in Europe. Everything is going nuts. And the amount of radiation now detected in Japan was 85 times higher cesium-137 than the maximum level in Chernobyl. We now have seals and polar bears getting ill in the Arctic from radiation. We have the government doing nothing, no comments by the usurper-in-chief in the White House. And we continue to have things like the NDAA and the Expatriation Act pushed by the usurper-in-chief, who's now smirking that he can now probably defeat Romney as we head into an election. And we have a situation now, well, I don't want to steal your thunder here, but I want you to tell us the stories, because you have uh, some uh, yeah, breaking Russia, stories that uh, are... I, you know, you cannot make this stuff up. I mean, I, I mean uh, it, every day you it, can't it get gets soft. progressively worse week after week, and you look around and you say, oh, wow. No, oh, my. Oh, my. Yeah. Oh, my. I read Pinch more me, than yeah. probably 100 average people uh, in putting my blog and, and uh, kind of being your uh, news director. Uh, uh, you know, and I, it, it, it just boggles the mind. You can see the flow of things, and the flow of things is getting worse. And, and I mean, it includes the this ring of fire, which is so active in the Pacific. But okay, let's let's go to Russia. Yeah. Uh, Russia is massing troops on Iran's northern border, and is waiting for a Western attack. Um, they have a base in Armenia. Uh, which they have uh, built up uh, over the last two years, and uh, they've made it into a major geopolitical base. Uh, they have lots of special forces and everything else there. But more than that, they have uh, evacuated all the families of their military forces there. And they have a large uh, and growing body of troops massing on the Georgian border. Uh, what they intend to do is when Israel attacks Iran, uh, or if it blows up before them because of Syria, they will invade through Georgia and then peacefully pass through Armenia and go into Iran uh, in mass. And they are prepared and they have moved in some very high uh, uh, high tech missile systems uh, to counter what they expect to be. Um, uh, well, let me read it. Uh, Russia military believes that when the U.S. goes to war with Iran, it will deploy friendly forces in uh, Georgia and warships in the Caspian Sea, possibly with the help of Azerbaijan. So they've been deploying guided uh, anti-ship missiles in the Caspian shore in preparation. Uh, they have a very large offensive spearhead force, heavily armed with modern long-range long, long range weapons. And uh, the Russian spearhead is expected to be ordered to drive south uh, to prevent the presumed deployment of U.S. bases in the region and to link up with the troops in Armenia and take over the South Caucasus Energy Corner, along with our, uh, many of the Caspian National Gas, Natural Gas and Oil um, sites. That's the one that occurred uh, uh, three, several years ago, where the uh, Russians beat back the special forces from America, the Israeli special forces, and Blackwater Security, now called Academy, at the yeah. Rokai Tunnel in this same area. Yeah, the uh, the Israelis had a thousand of their commandos in there, uh, supposedly as mercenaries, and the actual the Georgian forces were de facto controlled by Israeli generals, and the uh, Soviets just whipped their butts big time, yeah. and uh, it it. They held off at the very end, uh, conquering, but they were two days away from overrunning all of Georgia. And uh, Putin threatened to hang, uh, uh, so, how do you pronounce his name? So, Shakashvili. Yeah. 
and uh, and next time he may. Uh, but this is this is very serious. This is World War III stuff, and the Russians are saying, and this uh, in diplomatic language, this is the red flag key phrase. They're saying this is a vital, a matter of vital national interest. When a country says that to another country, you better pay attention. That means we're going to go to war if you cross a red line. And the the Chinese have also said the same thing. The Chinese have made it clear that they are prepared to enter into the Third World War. War if Iran is attacked, the back door to Iran is Syria. Uh, you know, we just today and yesterday there are more reports that uh, our wonderful uh, uh, her which witchiness, the Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, yeah. uh, is is preparing to uh, to uh, and holding discussions to have a, a military incursion into parts of Syria to have a so-called buffer zone. Well, when that's that not happens, happen. the, the balloon goes up. The Syrians well, I, will not yeah. tolerate a Western military invasion at all of their country, and if it happens, the balloon goes up. They here's lost their missiles and... Yeah, here's what, I think will happen. here's what I think will happen. Number one, uh, the Russians behind the scenes have probably made representations to Obama and his Secretary of State and the military generals that the Russian Navy at Tartus and the Russian forces, which include not only uh, dozens of Yukon's hypersonic cruise missiles and sunburn missiles, and the Hoot, uh, which is the cavitation super uh, torpedo that can travel 384 miles an hour, about 250 knots per, per hour, will uh, basically decimate our Navy. That uh, that that there are hundreds of thousands of missiles. And we're not talking about the little bottle rockets, the Farage Five, and much bigger, that can deliver a deadly blow without even nuclear weapons to Israel. And Israel cannot defend with Iron Dome or the Green Pine missile system. So the fact is that if the war starts here, Israel will cease to exist. Period. Now people have said, "Oh, that's not in prophecy." I said, "Well, because it's not going to happen." What will happen is Syria will not be put down. It's not a ragtag band like Libya or Tunisia. It's a highly trained, Russian-managed, very top-notch armed forces. And with Russian and Chinese backing, there's no way that Syria is going to fall to the uh, these well, so-called and, and armed terrorists. Well, ultimately, the, the, the globalist forces who are behind all this know that. The globalist forces want a, a, a new global war. Because the economy is crashing, they've set it up to crash. It's too late to back off of that. Uh, just as in the Second World War was necessary because of the the Great Depression, and uh, even the First World War was necessary because of the economic uh, crash that started in 1907. They uh, they're so greedy and they're so evil. Uh, they do the same thing time and time again. They, they set everything up. They have a big boom. Uh, they create a lot of money, and then they come in and rape and pillage everybody and, and uh, steal all their assets at a fraction of the cost. You know, you have almost um, – well, actually, you have about 58% of the working population in America is now unemployed. Um, they're not counted as unemployed because they're not actively seeking work. Well, of course they're not, because after you try for months and months and months and spend gasoline and stamps and everything else, you find the conclusion, well, there's not much hope. Yeah, exactly. We've That's lost 50,000 major industrial plants in the last couple of years to outsourcing to third world countries. And uh, this is not an accident. It's deliberate. Uh, corporations are now preparing for a post-middle class America. And if Americans sit back and are stupid enough to allow this to happen, uh, you know, we're going to get what we deserve, and that is we're just going to be literally broken. Uh, we're going to be uh, destroyed, the middle class well, destroyed, the country destroyed. Now, I, I did an interesting article, uh, and the question is, will there be a mutiny in the Gulf? Uh, and will that lead to a full American military coup? No, I think we're getting close. We're we'll getting very close. We're getting close. Back in just a moment with Tim Alexander. I remember when I remember, I remember when I lost my mind. 
Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. And yes, we have some remarkable things here. Uh, West, of course, using uh, Syria to hit China, Russia, and Iran. Uh, and of course, you have some interesting things about the Syrian ceasefire. First off, you, you did a very pressing analysis, which I repeated and gave you credit when I spoke on Tuesday on the Rents program. The real issue here is that we have foreign armed terrorists, many of them from Tunisia and Libya and elsewhere, armed by the, the Saudi Arabians, the Qataris, Arab Emirates, Turkey, uh, Israel, Mossad, foreign uh, mercenaries such as Blackwater Security, now called, uh, called Academy, U.S. Special Forces over there, arming, training, and, and acting as advisors. And uh, they were using weapon systems that you describe very clearly. These are anti-tank weapons, anti-aircraft weapons, and they embedded themselves in civilian areas, and then the only way for the Syrians to get them out of there was to shell. So they turned Absolutely. civilian areas into death. That, that is standard military doctrine, because uh, every time they tried to move their... Uh, their armored personnel carriers and their, uh, which are uh, Russian-made, are fairly fairly good, and even their uh, main battle tanks. In they were being blown up. So what do you do in that case? Well, standard military doctrine is you sit back and you 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 shout. Right. So what's happening is, uh, and most no, no people don't realize, although there's ten thousand citizens dead, there's probably around one third of those are Syrian police and troops that were shot at by these these uh, these terrorists. And the fact is, what we have in the situation is a Sunni-Shiite war that's already started. World War III may have a hiccup, may even have a period of a pause for a peace treaty for a few years. World War III has already started. It's not a future thing. The economic phase with Russia and China and the Mideast between Sunni and Shiite has already started. It's not a future thing, years off, and it may take years to have fully culminate in a full thermonuclear exchange of biological weapons. But this phase of the war has already started, hasn't it? Absolutely, and I would even say that it really started on nine one one. Of course, it did. Uh, and and even more than that, um, you know, the, the, there were many stories at the time. Uh, many reporters, many photographers, both video photographers and still photographers, saw a man after the tires collapsed at the base that was blowing a trumpet. And they all tried to take his picture because it would have been the iconic picture of the whole thing. I mean, this guy standing on rubble blowing a trumpet, and not a single picture would come out. They either didn't take or when they, they, they went back to develop them, they, there was nothing there. I think it was Michael, St. Michael the Archangel, or St. Gabriel the Archangel blowing his trumpet at the beginning of, uh, of all. Now, by the way, um, when you, you talk about will our people in the Gulf, will our military commanders say no to orders to basically begin the Third World War? I don't know. Uh, well, I think that this attack against uh, Gary Stein, Marine, in Pendleton, trying to decommission him, is uh, tied into the idea that they know a number of our military leaders will not agree with orders that violate the Constitution and the Republic and put the American public in grave danger. Well, they have a duty to protect America from all enemies, foreign and domestic. And Obama is a compromised man. Um, I did an article two or three days ago, actually a couple articles. Um, Barack Hussein Obama II. Uh, now, remember, every single photo of this guy as a young man, either by himself in school or with his so-called family, has been photoshopped. And I'll bet you there's a whole lot of photos of Bill Deagle out there and Tim Alexander and anybody else listening to this as kids. And I'll bet you they weren't photoshopped or they weren't cropped or anything else. And there's okay. some of me that, that don't look so good probably. I would have loved to have had them photoshopped. But why? And we've never had a president that has had to go back and photoshop and clean up every photo of him as a kid. Well, the real reason is his mother was not who it was said. Her name was Joanne Newman. Right. She was Jewish, which means Obama is not Muslim. He's Jewish under Jewish law. Her her uncle uh, was Fred Newman, a very famous uh, communist in the United States, and 
she was the white girlfriend of the late Malcolm X. And Malcolm X was Obama's father. Malcolm X arranged with Sicardo, who was the uh, communist-leaning president of Indonesia, to take his love child and and the mother. And Malcolm uh, or Obama was raised for a number of years in the presidential palace in Indonesia. Now, the people that put him into power... Uh, the the Pinker family and and the others in Chicago they knew this. Uh, you know, Obama supposedly graduated from Columbia University. Nobody, nobody remembers him there. Uh, the Obama's past is completely bogus, and we allowed this. And I, I think the reason it was allowed is everybody felt guilty about the lousy way that black people have been treated historically in America. So he got by with this. But now it's it, it, the real problem is coming home to roost. They got Obama. They got him in a vice. That's how. That's their control over the guy. Uh, he's not who he was said he was. He was probably born there. He's not an American citizen. He's committed God knows how many crimes to cover it up. And they're blackmailing him. And he wants to live in the White House for another four years. But if he goes down the road that the Netanyahu extremists want and the globalists want, he's going to start World War III, and he's going to get most of us killed. And we are facing World War III. It's like we're staring down a track at night, and there's this headlight coming, and it's a train, and it's coming right at us, and we're tied to the track. Well, it's even worse than that. It's like we're staring down the barrel of a howitzer of a large caliber <laughs> Thing. And and we're not going to survive, let alone the shell coming out of the end, just the explosion to launch the shell. So uh, this situation is really nuts. And, of course, on top of that, we have the world, the northern hemisphere, getting more radioactive from Fukushima. We've got earthquakes everywhere. I was woken up at midnight. We know a San Andreas earthquake is going to happen soon. The big ones come to California probably in the next year or two. We know we're in a dangerous place of space where there's 30 times the increased risk of a meteor or, con or asteroid contact to Earth. We know that the magnetic field of the Earth is wavering. The release of xenon-133 and radioiodines dissolving the upper ozone layer. Animals in the southern hemisphere and northern hemisphere going blind and getting ultraviolet light burns. This is not normal. As I said on the rent show... You can't make it up. It's not normal anymore. Normal is not normal anymore. As it says, Ben's hearts will fail for fear of what is coming upon the earth. This is the most crazy time you can imagine. And we don't make this up. I'm constantly we shocked finally, every day. By the way, I'm in the American Midwest. We finally have spring-type temperatures. It's 60-some it's degrees. I have a sweater on. We had, I mean, uh, Iowa had 92 degrees a couple weeks ago. We had a record-breaking March. And, you know, there's the old prophecy about the end times, that you won't be able to tell the summer from the winter and all that. Yeah, yeah that's uh, those are end-time signs that are happening right now, where yes. the seasons are so mixed up, you can't tell what season it is anymore. Here in California, we had warm weather in the 90s in January, and now it's back into the high 60s and low 70s. You don't know what to, to expect every day. It's amazing. Yes, it is. And it's also radioactive every day. We are constantly bathed in radiation. No pun Yeah, well, but if you glow at night, <clears throat> then you won't need electricity. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> when we come back, we're going to talk. We're going to do a run through some of this. And we have our expert, Chris Harris, coming on with some incredibly shocking news about what's going on with uh, the NRC here in America and Fukushima and what's really on our, our way and it's not good. And uh, uh, Tim, we're joined by Chris Harris. Chris, uh, we've been following a number of things. This radiation uh, plume from uh, has now reached Hawaii from Japan. <clears throat> It'll be here at the California and the western coast of uh, Oregon and Washington State and British Columbia by next year. Uh, how bad is this, and how radioactive is the material coming? Well, the radioactive material is, it runs a whole gambit from uh, 
for anything from energies that are, uh, you know, short half-life and, and, and very, very low level to right on up to the cesium-137s uh, and the iodine-131 type stuff. And then, and then, of course, there's always the warning of the fuel particles that are, which I think is actually coming out now, uh, the fuel particles that uh, are just making it into the stream, and that's highly radioactive and to the point of grave, grave radioactivity. And that, and so, the, the, you know, it is being, the studies are showing that your kelp is absorbing uh, the radioactivity and is showing up uh, in 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 uh, kelp that's growing. That kelp kelp's a good absorber of iodine one thirty one. And what happens is that's the kelp on the California shoreline, right? Yeah, right Orange, Orange it, County, which uh, is uh, yeah. That, that was found. Uh, there's a fellow out there named Manley who uh, is a uh, who's a professor of uh, marine biology. He's having his students send them samples of the of the kelp all over the place. And what he does is he develops it uh, with a film. I think we discussed that it's possible to do that last time. This fellow is actually doing it. And, uh, you know, when, when you could you could get a photograph, sh- shall we say. I mean, it's, a, it's like a photograph of the, uh, well, you're measuring the electrons coming off of it because of the radiation. And Yeah, you can actually I, photograph the amount of what, electron it, emissions it, or beta it, particle and, emissions. And what it is. And yeah. kelp is found to have radioactive particles in it, and that's only uh, likely to get worse. You know, I'm, I'm increasingly concerned about eating seafood because uh, I think the Pacific is becoming rapidly contaminated. And, of course, uh, shrimp from the Gulf of Mexico is not exactly a good idea with all the corexid and oil in there. And, uh, you know, you just... <laughs> Uh, the re, Saint John in uh, the Book of Revelation speaks of uh, when he's uh, the, the thing that uh, the passage that so many people connect with the BP oil disaster. Something that looks like a mountain on fire will fall into the ocean and so forth. And uh, and then later it, it speaks of uh, a third of the or the waters will be made bitter and bitter wood wormwood which uh, wormwood or bitterwood is the translation of Chernobyl. And it, to me, it seems that the waters are literally being made wormwood, bitterwood. Uh, they are being made radioactive. Certainly the biggest ocean on Earth, the Pacific, seems to be increasingly contaminated. And I'm just not sure you should really be eating fish from the Pacific. Well, it is. Uh, there was some evidence that the fish are having internal organ damage too, and that was in an article. Well, they, they remember, they, it's going to go in plumes too. I believe it's credible. <clears throat> you know, it's, some, it's, it's, I think people should uh, ship a lot of the chaff. But this was pretty credible that the fish themselves also are getting. Uh, yeah, you, you, uh, actually, uh, some, some of the uh, information is uh, species including the opali, half moon, senorita fish. And that was uh, according to the L.A. Times. They said now, that there's... Uh, you know, what happens is these currents go around the entire world. If you look at the Sherwater Gulls, which are the large seagulls, that black current called Humboldt Current coming from Japan across and splits and it would run across the West Coast, goes northward toward Alaska and so along Washington, Oregon, and California along the Baja, that current goes around the world. Right. So in two and a half years, that radioactive water will circle every ocean on the planet. Two and a half years. It also means that there's places in the ocean where there is no radioactivity yet. But the problem is these isotopes have extremely long half-lives. Plutonium, 24,900 years, which means four half-lives, 100,000 years for it to be reduced to a significantly insignificant level. And that's if it stops. The problem is it's not going to stop. It's going to continue releasing plutonium, radioiodine, cesium-137, xenon-133 for thousands of years, maybe you know, for tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands, and it's going to continue bioaccumulating. And the ones that are particularly long-acting, like uh, 200 plus years, cesium and strontium, four half-lives is a very long time indeed. We're talking about literally a thousand years before the levels are significantly lower. If it stopped, it's not going to stop. That's the other part. It's going to bioaccumulate. It's like Chinese water torture. Only this is with radioisotopes. So we want to rename the Pacific Ocean to the radio. Pacific Ocean, Radio Pacific, or let's turn it into, we'll call it the Plutonium Sea. 
but uh, but we need to start to call, you know when the fact is our, I'm embarrassed by our government and our so-called academic institutions and when I contacted the head of nuclear engineering at UC Berkeley that was doing a pretty good job of trying to report at least some information after I contacted them they stopped communicating with everybody all we want to do is have them report what they already reported talk about it on the media the fact is well, Dr. Bill, we've become a fourth world country. I, I linked an article a few days ago about that. And what this writer defined as a fourth world country was a formerly first world country who is now dissolving economically, politically, socially, and has an incredibly high level of corruption, but at the higher levels, not the petty corruption that you find in third world countries where if you're pulled over by a cop, you give them a few pesos or ruples or something, or if Johnny in school is flunking, you give the teacher a gift and suddenly he has A's and B's. Not that level of corruption, but at the very highest level everybody's totally bought off and the media is totally bought off and and everything is totally corrupt and that's where we are today america as we know it has been systematically destroyed and continues to be systematically destroyed and now there it, it, it's so bad and things have gotten so bad I and mean, this this enormous nightmare in japan they've really not done anything and it's like, well, they talk about it, so that's doing something. No, it's going to kill us. There's well, a lot of talking, I'll yeah. tell you that much. And that, that part of it, you know, a, a year ago I, would, I mentioned that I was a bit disappointed that we didn't have an international plan uh, that's been well rehearsed in such an event with uh, uh, deployable assets of people who could go ahead and bring in the equipment necessary to cope with this type of an event you know i did mention that so that that sort of made the iaea lose some credibility in my mind and tepco and uh, japan and then further digging down deep uh, even more deeply where we thought uh, you know i learned a few things too where we were actually prepared better but there's certainly room for improvement in many many aspects and we're far from prepared to cope with the same type of event here in the United States, even though even though we do have a lot more uh, uh, safety equipment and, uh, and training and all, we're finding that we really need to rehearse harder and, and work harder to uh, sh- uh, get the information to, to uh, the plants, and the plants have to own up and they have to get up to speed and, uh, and uh, establish their procedures. Let's, let's talk about real issues of what we need to do here. We've got... Uh We've got the Rocketdyne facility. They're spending millions of dollars trying to fix up in Northern California that is 450 times more radiation released than the Three Mile Island, which is the biggest nuclear release on American soil. We've got 75% of the reactors sitting near or on fault lines in the United States, 104 reactors. We've got countries like Germany and that are going to get out of the nuclear industry. Uh, Syria, the Swiss have already decided that their nuclear reactors, which are sitting near enough fault lines, are all going to be decommissioned, but it's going to take too long. If we have the megaquakes, I expect to happen, and these earthquakes in Indonesia, the one here in California that's crawling up the San Andreas, and we're going to have the big one here probably within a year or two, or a big one, one of you know an eight, a 7.6 to 8 level earthquake. It's going to, number one, cut off the power supply in Southern California. It's going to cut off water supplies through the conduit and in the, in the channels that bring water in. We're going to have social chaos. And if you watch that miniseries called Doomsday Preppers, it's tongue-in-cheek humor, but it also shakes you up. Realize we're not ready for anything. Back in a moment. have sent a robot over to uh, Fukushima, but it's too little too late. And just to, as we've, I've mentioned for almost a year now, actually, within 30 days, I said, look, let's use our science fiction and our imagination. Uh, just like in Disneyland, Imagineering, we needed to put some kind of tent around the facility, not a solid structure, around each one and around the entire structure. We need to have a buckyball-style filter to get radioisotopes out. We need to have a seawall up so the debris is not pumping superheated steam miles out into the Pacific Ocean underneath the, the sea floor and then bubbling up. Uh, we needed to have ways of 
containment so it doesn't send steam jets going miles and miles away from the site to pop up in the schoolyard or literally in the tunnels in northern Tokyo. We're now, northern Tokyo is 25 times the level of radiation in the exclusion zone or the zone of alienation around Chernobyl and 33 times the peak radiation level around Chernobyl and Fukushima, 85 times the level of cesium-137. This situation is so out of control, and people think it's just a Japanese issue. Uh, the fact is, if MOX-4 cooling pool falls over, if it goes critical, we're going to have a level of radiation release that literally could decimate, this is the fact, based on the number of particles there, number one, it will kill most of the people in northern Japan or make them radioisotope uh, burden so high that they're going to die very swiftly. And number two, it could destroy a good bit of life on Earth. And that's without even starting a nuclear war by hitting the, the Bashir reactor or having an exchange between India, Pakistan, Russia, and China, etc. Uh, we're on the precipice of Armageddon. And, 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 it, and what's so insane, Dr. Bell, and, and you did talk about this, and we talked about this, and Chris talked about this, and even, you know, a year ago, nothing has been done. Well, they, they ignore us. And the fact is, we're the real media. We're the news. They're the snooze. And our so-called president is just an actor that is literally telling the public, yes, I'm doing things. He prances around the White House. He's doing nothing. He's not a real leader. Neither are the Congress and Senate. We see this dance by now we have Romney out there. He's an apologist. He'll be anything to anybody as long as he's in a position of power and can smirk and smile. They're going to have a real problem selling Romney to the traditional Republican. Well, there's one way they can do it. Because he's not a Christian. Right. Well, there's only one way that he can get the nomination. And that's he makes a public policy with, by his side, Santorum, who becomes the attorney general to get the personhood issue. Ron Paul, who either himself or directs, who becomes the director of the so-called Fed Reserve to dismantle it and turn it into the Treasury Department. And if Newt Gingrich becomes our, our, our minister, our, our basically our Secretary of State, because Hillary Clinton is an evil person, and she's hell-bent on pushing the so-called Syrian Free Army and starting war against Iran. Uh, and Obama is lockstep with the crazies, the worst elements in Israel, that are a tiny minority. They're not even a, a large minority. They're a tiny minority of the people in Israel. People in Israel, only 20% think it's maybe a good idea to attack Iran. Most of the people are freaked out by it and say, what the heck are you trying to do? We're going to have thousands of these missiles raining down on us. And the Israeli government's already made public statements on their own media that says these the, the, the uh, Green Pine Missile Defense System and the Iron Dome and the Patriot II system are for military target protection only. It's not for civilian areas, and people don't get us. If you're listening There's to Israel... There's 60 to 100,000 rockets and guided missiles <clears throat> aimed at Israel, and if they only use fuel air explosive technology warheads, Israel will cease to exist. Everything will be rubble. Well, and they're capable of putting radioactive material and everything else in there. And they're going to get Israel wiped off the face of the earth. Well, Israel will wipe of the off. people are opposed to it. Well, here's the thing. People don't realize that Iran has missiles that can strike every single city inside Europe, that Israel has weapon systems that will kill every Muslim within six to 10,000 miles of Israel, that uh, if they will do the Samson option, if they take down out Israel, if there's a war started, there won't be a Muslim city within 10,000 miles of Israel that will still exist. Okay, but maybe we sh don't want to go there. I know that, but the thing is there won't be any human life left. We'll enter a nuclear winter. We'll basically not see this, the sun for years. And uh, the population of Earth, most of it will die of cannibalism, uh, of uh, starvation, violence, and disease, and radiation exposure. And uh, as I say, don't forget advanced to bio war. And, of course, if you add advanced bio war, you add the Earth changes that are occurring, and I believe that it says, lest those days be cut short, which is in the book of Mark, then no flesh would survive. I think the cutting short is actually the earth changes itself may save us from ourselves. I think that the fact that we probably have things like earth-striking events like a meteor or comet coming soon, um, ozone layer destruction, uh, natural events like superquakes and tsunamis, it may actually save us from ourselves from the inevitable destruction of civilization, completely aside from the earth changes that are literally going to make us wake up and realize we're on a tiny planet 8,000 feet across where we're likely trying to kill every single form of life on Earth, completely separate from the galactic and the solar cycles and the ice age cycles that are pushing us toward the end of the civilization. The reason for that is, is the people that are, are following a, a Luciferian, a satanic agenda. 
and Satan is the driver because he knows his time on this planet is about up. He has not been able to blot out the name of Christ, and his time is up, and he wants to take the whole planet and all the human race down uh, with him, and it's not going to work. Well, this is my... uh I'm going to make a kind of a prophetic statement here. I believe that unless there is a public statement made with other conservative elements within the Republican Party, we virtually now guarantee that Obama will get another term. Obama received the scroll of Bush in 2007, Bush did, from the Sanhedrin, and he has the same right as Darius, uh, the Persian king, or Pharaoh, Pharaoh, the Persian leader, to actually set up the rebuilding of the the, uh, temple. Uh, that means that the scroll of Bush, which is passed on from Bush to, to Obama, and he gets a second term, he will be the one to ratify the rebuilding of the temple and the partitioning of the state of Israel. And as I said before prophetically, there are two great leaders you need to watch for. One is an apostate uh, false prophet that will be the U.S. president. Another is apostate Jew who will be the head of Russia. His name is Gog, chief prince of Meshach, Tubal, and Rosh. And Gog is a name of a Hebrew man, but he just so happens to come from Russia. So that's where we're going. We're going toward a bipolar world led by two great leaders, a false prophet and a beast dictator. And we're moving very quickly toward that, where there's going to be a peace treaty result of this conflict that's coming against Syria and Iran. If they try to push this envelope, it's going to result in a peace treaty. So I see an outbreak, not a war, but a peace. There's going to be a certain extent more death and destruction and chaos. But if there's even the slightest bit of war, this isn't just going to be contained. So I hear other you know, so-called uh, prophets and apologists try to say that they think there could be three different wars. No. If, and, and you're a military expert on this, uh, Tim. If they start a war against Syria and Iran with the Russians already lined up for an exchange oh. in China, it's over. We're not talking about three wars. We're not going to have a war of Gog and Magog, then another war. If we start a war with Russia and China, we'll have EMP over our cities. We'll 21st have no century warfare no, is not no survival. cell phones, no television, no internet, no toasters, no toasters unless you have them inside a garbage can. And a but you make cage. low in the dark, right? And the fact is, no, you won't live long because our cities will be targeted within minutes with Chinese nuclear submarines and Russian only hundreds of miles off our coast. We have minutes to strike. And when that happens, America will release from our silos thousands of missiles on Russia. And not if Obama made, has his way, he wants and, to denude 90% of our strike Not going to happen. Not going to happen. Unilaterally. Yeah, and also our space-based weapon systems. These other countries have no idea what's up there, all cocked and ready by Lucifer himself to start the end of the world. That's the problem by Lucifer himself. Right. And people don't understand. They think, oh, you're exaggerating. Well, if you're an atheist, agnostic, or a fool... You can spit all you want, but this is the facts. We're dealing with a situation now that has never before been seen by mankind, and as the Bible says, will never be seen again, thank God. Thank but it's, God going to require, it's going to require faith. Yes, I'm a prepper, but the basic preparation starts with prayer. If you don't know that Yeshua HaMashiach, the Father in the flesh, came, the God of not just a little yellow dwarf star and a small planet, but a vast universe of quadrillions of galaxies, let alone stars, he cares for every hair in our head and our little civilization. He cares for the unborn and the elderly. He cares for every person of every color of skin, the coat of many colors of Joseph. And we're at the crux of history now. We're probably moments to midnight, not, not, not minutes to midnight like in the atomic clock, but one or two seconds to midnight. And as Obama keeps pushing this envelope, as they keep passing the NDAA and the Expatriation Act, as we see the Russians lined up along the northern border of Iran, when this war starts, it will be, I believe, lead to a peace treaty, a covenant with death, as it says in the Bible. And we will know that the first day that they start that sacrifice will be on Sakat by rabbinic law. And you will know that this is the truth, that the book of Daniel is now unsealed, and the time of the end is here. We're going to bring on a remarkable author in the next week or two, Damon Author, talking about many of these other factors. Remarkable program. We need to probably do a little continuation, uh, if we can, Tim, right after the show. Thank you, Chris Harris. Amazing update on what's going on in America and Fukushima. <laughs> 